Hey, it's Tommy Hodgins. Uh, sometimes I see the question of people asking whether they should minify their CSS or not. And sometimes I also see people who are struggling with a setup where the minification step is breaking their build process or um, they're fighting with it. And I always ask, is it worth it or is it optimizing what you think it's optimizing? So here I have a few files that I've prepared. This is a slightly contrived example, and I'll talk about the limitations at the end of this, but let's look at this for a second. Here's a CSS style sheet. It has inconsistent casing, inconsistent stylistic formatting, and uh, not an awful lot of stuff in it, but this will be our example. Now, what I've done here in minified.css is I've taken this and said, okay, we can eliminate the space between the selector and the rule, we can eliminate space between the colon and the property value for properties. We don't have to put the last semicolon in a declaration block in. We don't need the closing bracket in the file. Um, and just removed things, made things smaller. And uh, that's a shorter file. So that is an example of something that would be a minified output. Now over here, I have something a little bit different. Here is prettified CSS, so it's similar to this first one. In fact, all of these have the equivalent CSS in them, but I have consistent casing, I have consistent formatting line breaks, and things like line break with a semicolon is repeated more often um, just so that there's more repeating patterns. And we're going to check out the difference in file size between the original, the minified, and the prettified, and then we're going to check out the file size difference when all three of these are gzipped. So if I open my console, I can check the file size and the gzipped file size. So if I say cat original, it's 143 bytes long. The minified one is 114 bytes, so it is quite a bit smaller. And the prettified one is the longest of all three. So 143 bytes versus 114 bytes versus 152 bytes. So on disk, the minified is smallest. Now if we gzip the original, it comes out at 147 bytes. So it actually went up a few bytes. If we gzip the minified one, it also went up a few bytes. It went from 114 to 123. And if we gzip the prettified file, it went down quite a bit. It went from 152 to 112. And 112 is smaller than any of the original files were on disk. The minified was 114. So what it looks like is if you have CSS and you minify the CSS, what you are optimizing is its file size on disk on your server. When you try to optimize for transfer and bandwidth of sending the file to someone, the most beneficial is a consistently formatted file with similar casings, as many different repeating patterns as you can get. And that is larger on disk, but ends up compressing smaller. So if you're somebody like Facebook, you probably care about this. You probably would rather have, you would spend to have more CSS on disk so that it compresses and serves better um, than trying to store minified files or something. Now I'm sure they have their own processes and I'm sure a lot of it's dynamically generated, but I'm just trying to give the idea of scale. So what are the limitations of this? Now this is a contrived example. These are very short files and so as you're seeing uh, even the minified file would probably end up being smaller if the file was large enough, but keeping in mind that it is CSS, you're still talking in the scale of kilobytes, not in the scale of megabytes. So even though these examples are just bytes, not even kilobytes, um, these general principles often show up. So the only real test of this is going to be for you to take your actual CSS and experiment with it, try minifying it, try formatting it more consistently, and then also checking the gzip compressed size and making sure that that's enabled on your server. Um, if I were to change just a few things about these, the numbers would shift around a bit. So it can be a little bit tricky to get the feel for what works or what is more optimal. But the general idea that you should be minifying everything or that minifying makes it smaller uh, simply isn't true. So in a lot of cases, 
you may not actually be benefiting anything from minification. It might just be an extra chore. Um, if you can prettify your stuff or output something that's nice and human readable, it turns out that the one that's the nicest for you to read is also the most efficient to serve. So I usually end up writing CSS like this and serving that. Um, but you should always check your use case and check your actual CSS.